So once you built yourself a cage, which again is, is going to be probably the hardest part about this whole process, um, build your cage. You need to patch your cage. Uh, and while you're patching your cage, you're going to have to think about polyflow. And what I mean by that is you're going to have to look at what you're patching down onto this shape and decide um, how many polys you need in each patch. Um, I probably don't need, I mean, the back of this hand is relatively flat doesn't need a whole lot of polys across this axis, across the z-axis here, so I could turn those down a little bit. Now, if I turn those down, obviously this patch is going to need to have the corresponding number of parallel patches, so you want to turn those down. That's going to mess me up here. I should have, what I should have done there was, and this is the way you'll have to work with this tool, is uh, patch each section that you can that's going to have the same number of uh, perpendicular and parallel rows and let's say we did now we'll do three here I have to drop that and then that's when you come in here and you do your lock just by hitting J and then you're going to reactivate this tool come back in here the reason for that is because here we've got one two three what do we do six six rows on the perpendicular. Uh, we don't need six rows down here on this face in the perpendicular. We don't need them on the parallel either. What we need here is three to match up what we just patched. And then I'd say three is probably pretty good for the for the parallel as well. So uh, that one looks good. And then you would lock that down and then you would proceed around this whole thing patching the sections as you go. And that will bring you to this point. Um, this didn't require a whole lot of thinking. I mean, this, like I said, was probably a couple hours of work. I might have uh, built that cage and then patched it or started patching it, realized it didn't work, uh, killed all my polys, and then re you know reworked that cage a little bit. Um, but it's not it's not terribly difficult once you start working through it. it it's just one of those things where a little bit of planning goes a long way, and uh, you might also find that. Uh, just working through it makes it easier too. So um, these sections of the mesh, I did not patch these. I left them unpatched on purpose. The, there was no way I was going to be able to flow. You'll notice here I got these two rows on the back of the hand coming down to the bottom here. And then I've got, what, like 12 back here, 11 rows coming down. There's no way I was going to get a good flow across the bottom. Uh, and the top was the same way. It was kind of bizarre mesh, you know, the mesh was cutting a little weird coming into the back here. So um, I lucked out in that the this section of the model is going to be flat, completely flat. The back is flat, the uh, the bottom's flat. If we look back at our uh, images here, you can see this, this is really flat, that's flat, so I lucked out. So I can hide n-gons back here, which is what I ended up doing. And is we'll go to our next section. So what I've done here is basically um, at this point I've closed in the bottom. Um, really ugly, but uh, it does work just because once we've subpatched, this is still flat. Your end guns are going to be hidden. Uh, nobody's ever going to know. And uh, it'll render nicely, which is all that really matters. So all I did to create this was I just uh, grabbed an edge loop yeah, just right around there, something like that. Not these, obviously. Hit the poly, hit the P key, made a poly, beveled it in one time, made a row uh, just around the edge to hold my edge, and then I did it again just to get this inner uh, end gun isolated a little bit. And uh, then I just started putting edge loops around all my edges. If you've done any uh, subpatch modeling, this should all be this should all be uh, standard practice to you. Um, without it, your mesh is going to look really soft and smushy. Um, and here you can see we've started to add those edges. So 
it's really starting to hold those edges real nicely. Um, now in here, I do recall not being able to get a row cut across here to hold this sharp crease here. So I do remember uh, having to put a little bit of weight map action on there. So if I turn on my weight maps, you'll see I just had to add a little bit of weight to this edge to hold that edge. Um, I think some people find shame in using weight maps. I use them only when I have to. I always try to cut geometry um, if I can. If for some reason I can't flow in a nice row, uh, it's going to create problems elsewhere in the mesh, then I fall back on those uh, on those weight maps, but I wouldn't, uh, don't let it cause you any shame. If you need to use them, use them. That's what they're there for. Um, that's pretty much it for refining that. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just a matter of doing it. You just, uh, cutting edges. If you watch the tutorial on the, uh, on the cylinder for the, for Birdie's gun, it's the same principle there. I've covered some of that there. Uh, just cutting edge loops and sliding them. I use the slide tool a lot for that. Uh, that's all there really is to it. The uh, next step in this process was I think at some point I def decided that my hand was a little too long based on the reference photos I had, so I just scaled it. That's all that is. Uh, and then I closed in the back. And uh, when I closed in the back, it's a little bit different than the bottom in that there's a s hole for the wrist geometry that fits in there. And um, I'll cover that real quickly. And that's really simple stuff. It's kind of the same thing that I did on the on the uh, the mesh for the gun cylinder. If you saw that, um, basically I'm just going to select that edge loop. I am going to create a polygon just by hitting P. It's there. It's not pretty, but it's there. So I'm flipping it twice just so it uh, displays properly. And uh, while I've got it selected, I am going to uh, align my work plane to that selection. Uh, I don't know if that shortcut key is still in there or not, but uh, I've got it assigned to Shift Home. I don't know if it's in there by default. If not, it's up here. It's uh, aligned work plane to selection. So now my work plane is assigned or aligned to that poly. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to make it uh, zero on the Y. And uh, I'm going to eyeball it. That looks pretty good. Uh, I should probably note the number of sides here is also important uh, if you want to make this easier on yourself. Um, if I could grab this, I'll show you. I'm going to reset my work plane now, and I'm also going to turn it off because it's getting in my way. Basically, um, this edge loop around here has, what, 15 edges, uh, which isn't quite right. Let's see, uh, something I should have done first is when I close that poly in, I'm just going to cut this edge around here. That'll hold our edge back there. Um, don't worry about that rounded ugliness yet, but basically I want to connect this vert to that vert so we continue that row of polys around the edge on the bottom. Um, now I'm going to select this poly, hold control, hit uh, the edge selection up top. That's going to select the bounding edges. And I'm looking at 13 edges around the boundary of the back of the hand, which is going to correspond to the cylinder that I just created. I want to make that cylinder with the same number of edges as are in the back of the hand because these are going to join up to this and uh, we'll do that in the next video.